Um, so we use these transformations of functions. And so basically the definitions here are, if you're adding a number to a function, then it's gonna cause your, your graph to move upward. Okay, and in the video that I made for this, you'll see some examples um, that I graph for you and how they shift and stuff. Okay, so anytime this is your function, if you're adding something, the graph is gonna move up. If you're subtracting something, then the graph is gonna move down, okay? So this is gonna shift upward, and this is gonna shift downward. If you are adding something inside of the parentheses, then it's gonna do the opposite. If it says plus here, it's not gonna be um, moving to the right, it's actually gonna shift left. And if you're subtracting, then it's gonna shift right. Okay. And so just so you can see an example here, you would have something like x squared plus four. That plus four makes it move up four units. If you have f of x is equal to x squared minus four, then it would go down four units. And if you have um, a plus c inside, then it's going to look like f of x is equal to x plus 4, let's say squared. Okay. So notice the 4 is inside. And then if you have to the right, then you would have um, x minus 4 squared. And so this makes it a little bit easier. So for example, if you had, okay, so let's say you had f of x is equal to x squared. So in 1.6, you saw that this is your parent function, okay? And so the graph for this is gonna look something like this. Okay, so let's say that with these transformations, I give you a problem that looks like this. Uh, x squared minus two squared plus two. Then this graph, since you still have the square up there, that means that it's gonna be related to this function. So it's gonna look similar, but it's gonna have its own characteristic, okay? So we look at this plus two here, and that's gonna make your graph move upward, right? Because we're adding two. And then inside, we can see that it's being subtracted. So we think of it as um, the opposite. So minus usually means to move left, but in this case, we're moving to the right. Okay, so if we wanted to graph this, then we can take um, these points here and we're gonna shift them. So we're gonna move this graph here, mm -hmm. it's gonna go up two. And so I would have my vertex here, but then I'm gonna move to the right two units. So my graph is gonna be here. Okay, so we're just basically getting a sketch. Now in the video you're gonna watch um, later at home, if you have a negative in front of the x squared, then the parent function, we already know looks like this, okay? But the negative is gonna cause the graph to move downward, okay? So that negative causes the graph to move down. Okay, so then we'll go back to the handout. So on, on your homework, you'll have a question that looks like this. Um, for each function, sketch the graph. So the functions when c is equal to negative three, negative two, two, and three on the same set of coordinate axes, okay? So what I would do is they want me to graph the following. f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. The first C is a negative three. So I'm gonna have here a minus three. And then the next one is a minus two. K, 
Okay, so minus two. And then the third one is a plus um, two. And then the last one is a plus three. Okay. You don't have to write this right. I mean, that's up to you, but I do write it just so that we can see what's happening with these values up here, because they can be a little confusing. So the minus three is gonna tell me that my graph should be shifting which way? Down, right? And then the minus two will be down as well. And then the plus two will be up and up. So we'll focus on the first one. Now the parent function, I'm gonna draw it in the first um, group of, of um, answers here, but your parent function looks like this. Right, the one in red is your parent function. So this red one, we need to shift it down three. So if we go down three, and these are a little hard to see here. Um, it looks like that, that would be this point, right? So that's okay. So I'll put a check mark here. What about minus two? Minus two, this is a minus four down here. So that's not gonna work, right? So this is going to be um, not the answer. Let's look at this one. This one here looks like it's at minus 2 and then minus 3. So that's OK. And then I need to move to the left, I mean up 2. So that's up 2. And up 3. So that's up 3. So this is representing the four functions here. These are being moved to the left and right, and that's not gonna work out, right? Because if it was to the left or right, then you would have the number inside of the um, absolute value sign. Okay, so since it's moving left and right, these are not um, solutions. Let's go to the next example. So for each function, sketch the graph. So the function, when C is negative four, negative two, two, and four, okay? So where is the C located? The C is located inside of the square root, right? So if it's inside, then the shift is gonna have to be left or right, okay? So anything that is up or down, we can um, get rid of. But first, we always have to make sure from 1.6 um, what parent function it is and what it looks like. So the parent function is located here and it goes something like this. So the first graph here, does that look like it's moving um, up or down or left and right? Okay, so we, we can wait and see here. Um, this one looks like it's moving up or down or left and right. So you want to ask yourself those questions, right? And then this one, is it moving up or down or left and right? And it's not even pointing the right direction, right? And then the same on this one. Okay. So we'll look at each one. We can do the same. So f of x is equal to the square root of x. And the first c is a negative 4. So I'm going to have a minus negative 4. And then the second one is the square root of x minus negative 2. And then the third one, x minus 2. And then the last one is x minus uh, 4. Okay. So that first one, negative and negative, positive. So since we have x plus 4, then that's going to tell me that the graph should shift to the left. And then this one, I have um, plus, plus and plus. That's going to mean to the left as well. And then this one is going to be um, to the right. And this one's going to be to the right. So if we look at the first graph, do we have a graph that moved to the left for units? So if we were here at 0, 0, the graph should be on this side, right? So my graph should have been over here, but it's not. So I'm going to count this as not an answer, right? Because there's no shift to the left. And then for the next one, 
again, the red here is your parent function. So is your parent function, was it shifted to the left? No. Okay, so that's not gonna be an answer. And then this one, this is my parent function. This had some movement to the left, but the arrow is not pointing the right direction. So this is not gonna be an answer either. And then over here, if we check, my parent function got moved over to the four. So this one here, let me call this A, B, C, D. So this is your A, and then this is your B, this is your C, and this is your D. So this is gonna be our, our answer. Okay, so here they tell us that C is negative four, negative two, one, and two. This is a piecewise function. So they want you to use the first equation when x is less than zero. And this is when x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so first it's, it's important to, to figure out um, what part of the function you're gonna be using given these values. So for less than zero, that means that we're only looking at whatever happens on this side. This is x less than zero. And for this part of the function, it's gonna be anything that is on this side. Okay. So remember, the reason I draw this is because if you have a parabola, we're not gonna care about this side. So we're not gonna care about this side. So you're only gonna be looking at part of your parabola. Does that make sense? Okay, so you're not gonna look at the whole parabola, just part. Okay, so, um, so let's figure this out. So I'm gonna draw the, the parent function in here. Okay, but again, we don't care for this first part. We don't care about this side of the parabola. So I'm gonna erase it because I only want to focus on the other part. So it says that we're going to be moving down four units. So does it look like this red parabola moved down four units? No, right? We have stuff over here, but since this is opening downward, then this is really going to belong to that negative x squared. Does that make sense? So we can ignore this part of the bottom function. So now let's look over here. So again, your parabola that we're focused on is this part. Does, so I'm gonna draw my parabola. So does this parabola right here look like it moved down four? And that would be that point. Okay, so that would be this part of the graph, which is okay. And then for the minus two, it would be this part of the graph. So that's meeting these conditions, okay? Let me, let me make it bigger for you guys. So does everybody okay with, on this side, we can see that it meets um, these conditions on, uh, that I just put a check next to. Now this one, since it has a negative, your graph is gonna be opening down, okay? And we only care about the right side of the graph. Okay. So we need to check. So let me erase the red because we're not interested in the red anymore. Um, now we're interested in, in this negative x squared. So remember the graph goes down like this. But we don't care about this side of it. Oops. We only care about this side. And why do I care about this side? Because they're telling me here to only focus on the right side of the graph. So from this graph, it says um, that it's gonna move up one unit. So you can see here that the graph did move up one unit and then here it moved up two units. And so this actually satisfies this condition as well. And then of course on this side, you can, um, can, you can say this is not the answer because the graph is moving to the right. So that would have meant that the minus four would have been inside of the x squared. Okay. So this is not an answer.
Yep. So when you're doing these on the website, um, if, it, if it's helpful, write the equations that you're looking at because then it's a little bit more clear. And if you had to draw all the equations, like if I had these four, just draw all of them and then erase um, what you don't need. Let's go to four. You'll have a couple of these questions. It says use the graph of f of x equals x squared to write an equation for the function represented by each um, graph. Okay. So always ask yourself, well, who does this graph belong to? Who is its parent? Well, I have a parabola here. So the parent function is x squared. And the graph for the parent function, I encourage you to always um, know what it looks like. So this is my parent function. Okay, so that's x squared. So I need to figure out um, what do I have to do to this green graph to get the black graph. Okay. So um, what is the first thing that you might notice? In Okay, so it's opening down. The black graph is opening down, right? Um, it's opening down, so we need a negative in front of the x squared. Okay, so we can put that here. I'm just going to call this g of x. Or to make it better, let's call it, um, well, g of x, but I'm going to make it in black since the graph is in black. The graph is opening down, so I needed to have a negative in front of it. And then what kind of shift did it have? Did the graph move up or down? It moved up, right? And if you're looking at the green one, how many units did it move up? Two. So is that going to be a plus two or a minus two? A plus two. And so if we had, if we left our answer like this, then our answer, our graph would be right here. Okay, but what else do we need to do to the graph? We need to move it to the left, right? And how many units did it move to the left? It moved over, um, if we were here, it moved over one unit. Okay. So if it's moving to the left or right, where does that number have to be? In the parentheses, right? So I'm going to adjust this a little bit. And I'm going to put a parentheses here. And then since it's moving to the left, I'm going to be adding a 1. So that would be our, our answer. Now, one way to check your work, but I encourage you to try it first and not depend on the, on the decimals calculator because when you're taking a test, for example, um, the computer doesn't let you go to another website. Okay? But you can check your work if you go to decimals okay and so you can see does that look like the graph on your paper and it does right okay. so go ahead and um see what you can do with the other one symmetry okay and so if you have x squared we said that if you put a negative x squared it costs the graph to open down okay so whenever you have um if, if you could imagine me like folding this paper, if this was my paper and I fold it in half, then it would cross the x-axis, okay? So if the graph, if you fold it here, it's gonna land on top of this one here, okay? So that's symmetry on the x-axis. And that's caused whenever you have this negative on the outside of the graph, okay? But what would happen if the negative is on the inside, okay? If the negative is in the inside, then that's gonna cause symmetry on the y-axis, okay? And I'm gonna illustrate that because it, it almost seems like nothing happens to the graph. But let's say I have this, right? If you have this negative inside, 
then this graph would flip on the y-axis. So this one here, imagine it like turn, right? But on the y-axis. So from here, it would become this. So you flip it. Okay? So whenever you're graphing, if you see a negative inside, it's going to flip it this way. If you see it on the outside, then it flips it down. Can everybody see what I did with my reflection here? Like you're turning it around. So let's start with that problem that we were working on. So first, who does this graph belong to? Does anybody remember from the last section? So it's going to belong to um, the parent. Is square, square root of x. Okay. So in that section, the first part of the handout, I have um, I listed all the graphs there for you. Okay. So if it's helpful, you can print it out so you can have it with you. So the parent is square root of x. So I'm going to draw square root of x. So it's going to look something like this. Okay, so that's your parent. So in order to get the picture that is right here, we need to see what is happening. So was there any shipment up or down? Down, right? So it went down one, two, three. So at least we know it's going down three. So I'm going to write it here, plus 3. Is it doing any type of shifts? So think about um, what I was talking about earlier, like how can you get to that graph? Think about if I fold it on the x-axis or if I fold it on the y-axis, is there any shifts that are left to right? Oops. And then is there um, anything else? Okay, so since it moved right, how do I represent that? I'm going to have it inside, right? So this would be x. And then I move right. How many units? Two. Since it's moving right, it's going to be a negative. So we all agree that right now, we should have square root of x minus 2 and then minus 3. So now we're right here, right? But our graph is pointing um, this way. So what else can I do? Okay, so let me show you with the computer what happens here. So let's say we had a negative square root, square root of x. So this is our parent function. But what if I add a negative now? Negative square root of x. What, what happened? It flipped it over, right? Okay. So does our picture have some flipping in it that we can see? Okay, so let's look at our picture. Okay, and then look at the computer. Oops. So now, since we're flipping it, it would make it look like this. Right? But is ours going th that way? It's supposed to go this way, right? So let's see how we can do that. So now if we put a negative inside, then now it flips on the y-axis. Okay? And so this, this right here, we would have to add a negative on the outside, but then we also need one on the inside. And then you have to take care of one more thing. So let me just put in what we have so far. So we have a negative, where is the negative? Negative um, square root, and then see what happens here. Negative x. minus 2, and then you're going to see something here. 
Uh oh. Is that where it should be? But let's let me add the rest here just so we can. The rest was minus three. So does anybody um, know why we ended up over here? Any any suggestions what might have happened? Let me go back to our equation. Okay, what about this negative here? The one in green? Yeah, so we had we should have um this here, right? So that would make it a negative x plus a two. Okay, because we're applying the negative, but it has to go all the way across. Okay. All right, so for example five, go ahead and try um, example five and then we'll continue on with the other section. Okay, so it says the function g is related to one of the parent functions described in section 1.6. Um, identify the parent function. So who does this guy belong to? So since it has a square, right, it's going to belong to f of x is equal to x squared. So that's the parent function. Describe the sequence of transformations. In other words, when they ask for that, is there any up and down shifts? Is there any left to right shifts? Is there any reflections on the x or y axis? And how are we going to know? Well, here we're adding a plus 8. So that makes your graph do what? Shift up, right? So we can say, and then for your computer, it gives you multiple choice. So you just select um, the ones that, that apply to your problem. But for us here, I'm just going to write shifts upward, eight units. And then sketch the graph in your computer. It's going to give you four different graphs, and then you pick the one that is the answer. Okay. So your graph should be up here at eight. It's going to look something like this. For letter D can be confusing sometimes. It says use the function notation to write G in terms of F. Okay. So I just want you to write this function in terms of F of X. So what we have to do here is write G of X. Well, in instead of um, writing X squared, we know that was um, F of X. So I'm going to write here f of x plus 8. Okay. So that's in terms of f of um, g now, in terms of f. So basically, they're saying to the parent function, which we're calling f of x, add 8 units. Okay. So that's all it's saying. All right. So that is um, basically everything I wanted to talk about for 1.7, 1.8. Um, I sent you guys a link to the happy hour for last week. And in that link, I went on, we went over some of these problems that are right here. So if you want to see more examples, you can um, look at that as well. Besides the video that I already created, um, that would be another resource for you. Okay. So for section 1.8, we want to be able to take two functions and add them together or subtract them or multiply and divide them. And so the first thing you want to do is whenever you see this, they want you to add the two functions. And I encourage you to write it as f of x plus g of x. Okay. So I always write this, rewrite it so that instead of f parentheses, f plus g parentheses, you're actually separating it. To work it out, um, we look at the given functions here. And what do they tell me f of x is? They tell me that it's 5x minus 3. This is your f of x. And then I'm going to have a plus. Here's g of x. They tell me g of x is 2 minus x. 
And then all we have to do is combine like terms. Let me use black because green does not show enough too good. So what are my like terms? X and 5X. So this is going to become 5X minus X is 4X. And negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Okay, so this is my answer. The we're subtracting, we have f of x, and I'm just going to rewrite it as minus g of x. So f of x, we said was 5x minus 3. Then we have subtracting. Here, a lot of people always uh, make a mistake here because they don't use parentheses. Okay? Since I'm subtracting, I need to subtract everything, so I'm going to put a parenthesis here and then put my g of x in there. g of x is 2 minus x. Okay. So again, the problem there is if you leave the parentheses out, then you're only applying the negative to the 2. So this would become 5x minus 3, distribute the negative, minus 2, plus x. So gather your like terms, 5x plus x is 6x minus 5. And I actually, to be honest with you, I always like to rewrite it so that I know that f minus g of x is 6x minus 5. But because of space, I was just writing down the answer here and writing my work across instead of down. Okay. So the next one, you can rewrite this as f of x times g of x. So f of x is 5x minus 3, and g of x is 2 minus x. So since you're multiplying, they, you want to multiply the two parentheses. So we're going to get 5x times 2, 10x, 10x, and then 5x times negative x is negative 5x squared. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. And then positive 3x. Gather your like terms. So we have a negative 5x squared. 10x and 3x is 13x. And then minus 6. So the next one. I'm going to write it on the side over here. This is equal to f of x divided by g of x. f of x is 5x minus 3, and g of x is 2 minus x. If you can simplify, then you would. In other words, if you can factor out the common terms of here and here, and then plus 1, then you would do that. But here, I cannot do that anymore. Okay, so that's my answer here. And then the last part that they'll ask you to do is to find the domain of the f of g. So you would ask yourself those questions. Um, do you have a fraction? Yes. Okay. Is there a variable in your fraction? Yes. So to find it, we're going to set 2 minus x equal to 0. Okay. So we solve for x here. We get 2 is equal to x. So in other words, x cannot be 2 because 2 minus 2 would give you a 0. Okay, so your domain is everything except for 2. So I can write it. It does say interval notation, so you're going to write it as negative infinity all the way to 2. And then it starts at 2 all the way to infinity. I think on your computer, you don't have to type in the letter D, just the parentheses. Let me see. I'm going to um, skip this one really quick, only because um, I want to make sure that we get to the other ones. But let me just do letter D on it. Okay. So for letter D, well, like here, I, I'll put the answers here. This would be um, x squared plus 7 plus 8 minus x, and we can't simplify it. This would be x squared 
plus 7 minus square root of 8 minus x. We can't simplify that. x squared plus 7 times square root of 8 minus x. You can write this as um, square root of 8 minus x squared plus 7 square root of 8 minus x. The computer might take this, but they might want you to simplify. But the division one is the one I wanted to cover really quick. Um, you would have f of x, which is x squared plus 7, and then square root of 8 minus x. And you can't do anything there. Okay? So that would be your answer. But the, the domain, do you have a fraction? Yes. So we cannot have zero in the denominator. Do you have a square root? Yes. So since you have a square root, we take the radicand and set it greater than or equal to zero. Then how do I solve this? So I'm going to solve it two ways, okay? So if I add the x here, then I get 8 is greater than or equal to x. Okay, so that's fine. But some of you might actually do this, subtract 8, and then divide by negative 1. And then you might write your answer like this. But is this the same as this? No, right? So don't forget. If you divide by a negative, you have to switch your inequality. Okay? So now this is the same as this. So I just wanted to make that point of you're dividing or multiplying by a negative, the inequality is going to have to um, switch. So what is this telling me? For the square root, it's telling me that I can, my domain is going to go from 8 and anything less than 8 that I can use for my domain and not have a negative in here. Okay. But what happens if I use the number 8? I would get 8 minus 8, and that would cause me to have a 0, right? So I cannot use the number 8. So my domain is going to go from negative infinity all the way to 8. Normally, we would use a bracket because it has the equal sign. But since we don't want it to be a 0 because it has a fraction, then I'm going to use um, parentheses. Okay. Um, these are called composite functions. And the way they work, I'm going to write this in black. And I'm going to make G in red. Whenever you see this symbol, F composed of G, the little circle, doesn't mean multiplication. It means composition. And whenever you see this, you want to write it as F. You want to write it as F. And then you're going to have G is going to be inside. So the second letter is what goes inside. So what does this mean? We can write, um, evaluate it now. So we're going to have f. And we know what g of x is, right? g of x is what? x minus 9. So I'm going to put that in here. So again, g of x was just x minus 9. Well, normally, if you had something like this, and you had f of 2, then the 2 is being replaced to your x, right? So that's all that we're doing here as well. Whatever is in the parentheses here, so whatever is in here, we're going to put it into the function f. Okay, so that's going to give me x minus 9 plus 8. If we simplify, we get x minus 1. So again, first 
you write down what g is, g was x minus 9, whatever you have in here, you take whatever is here, plug it in for function f. Why? Because we have the function f. So for the next one, we would have g, and inside, it's reversed now. Inside, they want f of x. And how do I know the last letter is what goes inside? So we're going to end up with g and f of x, they tell me is x plus 8. Okay, so now whatever is in the parentheses, we're going to take it and plug it in for my x and the g function. So I'm going to have x plus 8 minus 9, x minus 1. So this is a coincidence that they're the same answer, OK? Um, it doesn't always happen that they're going to be the same. So whenever you see f of g and g of f, it doesn't mean you're, it's the same thing. It just happens to be that here in this example, it was the same. And then g of g, we just write it as g of x. So we have g. What is g of x? They tell me is x minus 9. So again, no matter what's in here, I'm going to substitute that for x in which function? Um, g, because it has a g in front. So this will come over here, and we're going to plug it in for this x. So we'll end up with x minus 9 minus 9. So we end up with x minus 18. 